Hiya, Jackie. Remember us from the candy club? Well, do you? Sure he does. Trust me, ladies. I wish I did. <laughs> Set two years after the events of the first game, The Darkness 2 throws you back in the role of Jackie Estacado. Now living in a mansion as the head of a notorious New York crime family, and still mourning the death of his girlfriend Jenny, Jackie has managed to keep the darkness, an ancient being using his body as a host, in check, at least until now. It's not long before you're ripping through your enemies using Assistant 2K's coined quad wielding. You get two human hands to shoot guns, and also two demon arms. The left one is used for picking stuff up and throwing it around, while the right one lets you slash in eight different directions. Sounds complicated, but it's actually pretty smooth. There are a couple of obvious differences to the last game right away, the first being the visual style. The original opt is for a gritty, realistic look, and while walking around dingy subways throwing money at buskers is great and all, the sequel goes all out with a completely new artistic direction of its very own. Vivid colors splash across the screen, bordered by distinctive black lines. The best way of describing it is it's like playing a graphic novel. The characters still look great, and they're impressively expressive. Overall, in an industry often overly obsessed with producing more and more bland, stale, brown, washed out shooters, it's refreshing to see a developer not afraid of using the entire color palette. The church put on a beautiful service. Yeah, they did it right, didn't they, Benny? You bet. Top shelf all the way. Classy. But onto the gameplay. In the first game, the powers of Darkness Lander are pretty cool, but also kind of clumsy. You can only use one at a time, with only two really being useful in battle, and one of those is just a special pair of guns. But now the powers work right alongside each other. You can shoot while throwing things to people and slapping them around, or tearing them apart. The sheer number of ways to dispatch enemies is impressive. For example, pick someone up and you have four different categories of execution. Each category comes with multiple animations, and also their own specific rewards, like replenishing health or replenishing ammo. Then you also have things like the Swarm Power, which stuns enemies and leaves them prone for easy execution, Gun Channeling, which lets you shoot through walls, and also the Black Holes, which kill enemies in the vicinity by drawing them in. Not to mention that satisfaction comes with stealing a riot shield and using it to slice the owner in half. And finally, the Impish Darklings are back. In the original game, you got four different types with their own behaviors, but this time you get one consistent companion. By doing this, they put a fair amount of work into fleshing him out as his own character, as well as helping you out. He also brings a dose of lighthearted humor to the game. Hello, monkey! It's been too long! Give us a hug! I'll pass. This little guy is capable of taking out the occasional enemy, as well as desiccating his corpse when he's done. He also acts as a pretty unobtrusive marker, often leading the way and showing you where to go. To keep track of and develop all your powers, you get a fairly standard skill tree with four different branches. Points are earned as dark essence depending on how you kill your enemies, and you can then spend them as you wish. This allows you to focus first on developing the skills that you find the coolest. But you're gonna have some kind of weakness. As you may have guessed, this comes in the form of light. Step into brightly lit areas and you'll quickly find that you don't have access to anything but your guns. The solution? Get rid of the lights. Whether this means hitting them or shooting them, you have to get back into the darkness. Later on in the game, you'll find enemies that know about your weakness. Overall, this is a pretty cool mechanic. There are, however, quite a lot of lights in the game that are bulletproof for no reason at all. It does get a little bit tiring. Back to the story. As I've said, you're living in a pretty neat mansion now, but you don't get too long to enjoy it. Jackie quickly finds out that he's now the target of a cult-like order called the Brotherhood been keeping something that was once lost. Something that doesn't belong to you. Now you have to choose to give it back. What happens to you is of secondary concern. I only care about one thing. I want the darkness! I don't know what you're talking about. Jackie doesn't want to give it back, of course, because he thinks the darkness is keeping Jenny alive somehow. And not helping matters, Jackie keeps seeing visions of Jenny. Listen to the song. Listen to the words. Isn't it beautiful? The darkness can't keep people alive, and that's what it does with Jackie when he dies. In their first game, putting his body back together, he sends Jackie's mind to this hellish version of World War I, complete with German zombies and crazy red skies. 
This time, Jackie is sent to a relatively calm mental hospital, complete with dream versions of real-life characters. Johnny, don't you see what's happening, Jimmy? The darkness is inside our heads. You mean the voice you hear, Jackie? The one that makes you do bad things? Does that seem reasonable to you? It's not quite as cool, but it does still break the pacing up nicely. While the game has some deeply fun combat, a nice story, and some excellent voice acting all around, the one major complaint against it is its length. You can easily be done the main campaign in 6 or 7 hours. But there is the Vendetta mode. This allows you to play online or offline with other people or on your own, while controlling one of four different characters, each with their own unique weapons. Inugami has a sword. Shoshana has a gun. JP has a crazy voodoo stick. And Jimmy has an axe. While the Vendetta mode does have a decent amount of length to it, the game is still very short and that's definitely an issue. But it's also amazingly fun and has a lot of replayability. If you're looking for a shooter with a bit of flair, it's well worth your time. If the next game can last a little longer, then Jackie's Struggle with the Darkness will stand up there as one of the best franchises when it comes to first person shooters. Every second of every day for the last two fucking years, I kept myself in check. Gritted my teeth and kept it buried. Oh, now it's back. And I can feel what it's doing to me.